happiness and hello today we're going to just review some more boots and they're uh, kind of getting to the miscellaneous categories when i started this it was a bunch of guys from some of the facebook boot groups that wanted to know about my boot collection in its entirety i kept showing like one at a time or maybe two at a time on weekends saturday and sunday when i'm not working and kind of pictures of me in the boots and close-ups of the boots and they're like how many you got we want to see them all so this is why we're just going through everything i got and we will finish soon maybe sometime in january or february because i only end up doing these videos every couple weeks or more and i don't know what we're going to do after that but i'll figure it out so most of you probably have heard in the previous videos i'm not really into thoroughgood work boots um, every time I, I get them and have given them to one of the workers, I, I like the unlined ones better. I really love the design, and I don't know why Red Wing can't do what Thoroughgood's doing and make a, make a quality work boot with a mock toe design and steel toe, because that's what I really like. I actually just um, rotated with my work boots into a, a, a 90s Super Soul Red Wing uh, with the mock and the steel toe. But the thoroughgoods that I do really like is the 1892s. That's both of these pairs over here. That's The 1892s is, is the Heritage Line Thoroughgood uh, mother company, which is called Weinbrenner Shoe Company, was started in 1892, so even before Red Wing. And um, uh, Thoroughgood itself, the, the Thoroughgood branch, or when they kind of branch out into this workwear uh, line Thoroughgood. I think that was in 1917. Um, they are from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We have the P&W bootmakers, and then we have uh, some of them that are kind of that the, the 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 northern area of the United States, the the middle northern area. I don't know. Correct me. What is that called? The Midwest? No, the mid north. I don't know. But <laughs> the, a lot of boots came from those areas. A lot of uh, European immigrants came to the United States with bootmaking skills. Weinbrenner really helped out with the Second World War effort and uh, made a lot of army boots. A lot of companies did. And um, so they were known for that. I had a pair of Weinbrenner boots and um, they were some steel toe work boots, I think from the nineties. I liked them. They were unlined. They were a big round steel toe and I wore those out. Um, Anyway, let's get right into it. <laughs> Check this out. This is called the Thoroughgood 1892 Tomahawk Vibram 100 Soul. I got it for really cheap. You can't even find these. I want I the only colors I've seen I've seen the green and then there's like a a brownish color, brownish rust-ish color. And those are the only ones I've seen. I don't know if they made them in more um, colors, when you go on Thoroughgood's site, it really just, it, 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 it's not like a selling site. I know Red Wing, you can buy the heritage boots from their site, and then a lot of the work boots, it's just asking you to go to a retailer. Um, the Thoroughgood site, or Weinbrenner site, is just a lot of information on the boots, and then you got to go to a retailer to buy them. So, I see some 1892 Tomahawks on the internet, but it's, they're old listings. They're not finding these, I'm not finding these for sale anymore. I think I paid less than $100. They had a bunch of red dirt. Someone had them. There was just, I don't know if you can see, there's a bunch of red dirt in the that Vibram 100 sole. And I cleaned them up. They had a little patina on the toes. I polished them a little bit. And I really love these. Uh, my friend Rugged Workwear has a pair of these. He, he and I are the only two that I know that display the Thoroughgood Tomahawks on in Facebook and Instagram. Um, but these are great. If you can get a hold of these, the Thoroughgood Tomahawk, it is like a service boot. Looks like it's like a seven inch boot. It's a very nice boot, very comfortable. I love it. Um, the other ones that I have now are the monkey boots, roofer boots, lace to toe boots, bowling shoes, whatever you call them. Now, my wife, the lovely woman from Guadalajara, Mexico, um, was wearing these. She loves these monkey boots and she was a shoe and boot collector from way back, even before me. And so I was like a lot of the guys, a lot of guys in the groups. I mean, come on guys. 
you don't have to make fun of people. I, you know, it's just, we all know they're like bowling shoes. And um, every time someone posts, there's, there's certain guys that guys are, oh, bowling shoes, huh? Well, I don't know. Once you start collecting, maybe if you're just a work boot guy and you just see them, you just make fun of them. Um, but they're supposed to be a roofer boot. They're also called a roofer boot. And I think the reason why is they're laced to toe. And what laced to toe is, is it allows you to adjust the tension down here instead of up here, you know, down here. So that when you're standing on a slant, your foot isn't sliding back and forth in the boot. And that's why it's called the roofer boot. Um, I, I had some history on the original roofer boots. I think they were from Europe. Um, but it grows on you. Once you start collecting, once you get out of that pure work attitude and you start collecting boots for the heritage and the quality, uh, you, you love them. Look at these. They have like green stitches. They're just really super cool. I was blessed to get these, I, I think, on Facebook Marketplace. And they're just in like new condition. I think I paid like 150 for them. You can't touch them for like less than 300 most of the time if you see them pop up. And it's very rare. All the, you know, the, the, the double leather here with the brass rivets on the side. Super cool boot. I love those. So those are my Thurigoods, what I have right now. I have been through Thurigoods. Like I said, I, I've been all the way through a, a Weinbrenner pair of work boots. I really liked them. The sole was a, a different sole than the Red Wing. It was kind of like a Red Wing type boot for me, and I, uh, the, the the kind that I wear at work, the two two three threes. But the sole was a little bit hard, and um, I, I enjoy the Super Sole, the Red Wing Super Sole. It has a, it's it's just a pressed on sole. It does have a, a type of of welt, a, a, a rubber welt that's attached to that sole, but the heel is part of the sole on the Super Sole. They're non scuffing non-marking when we're working on people's floors or you know in people's uh, businesses or houses and um, they're soft but not quite as soft as what we call the Red Wing calls the traction tread or we call the Christie sole I think Vibram calls it or the wedge sole but they're soft and so uh, the one of the um, the mason boots the antique mason boots if you're uh, on my Instagram or in any of the Facebook groups I'm in I posted pictures yesterday those were really awesome mock toe, steel toe, I think from the 50s. I just went all the way through them. But the sole's a little bit harder. And so those Weinbrenner ones were a harder sole. I end up uh, throwing them away, but now I'm cutting the steel toe, the steel out of the toes uh, and saving it. Because when I had my um, Professor Barnett's, my Indonesian bootmaker, uh, made me their Abraham, which is like a, I designed like a green and black army boot type, and I wanted steel toe. And they had to source them. They didn't readily have them in stock. So now I, before I throw out the old steel toe boots, if nobody wants them, I'm cutting the steel toes out and keeping them. And for those of you that are interested, Red Wing makes a boot called the Ashby, which is kind of a six inch mock toe, steel toe, super comfortable, like wearing house shoes. They used to make the Carhartt boots in the same type of design. Now the Carhartt boots are a much cheaper make um, and I don't like them anymore. But uh, the Ashby's have what's called an aluminum toe. You have a, you know, you have a non-structured toe. You have a structured toe. Some people call it a elastic toe, which kind of has something in there, which makes it not collapse. Most of the heritage guys, or I would say a lot of the heritage guys, like that collapsing unstructured toe. But then you got the structured toe. Then they have what is called a composite toe. I've never had one of those or cut them out. Then they have an aluminum toe, and that's what the Red Wing Ashby's have. And I cut out the aluminum, and I'll tell you, the aluminum's a little bit thicker than the steel, uh, but it is, I, I think it's just as good, because the pieces that I have saved out of the Ashby's that I had, or that one of my workers had, um, seem just as sturdy and strong as the steel toe. Now, the Thurgood's being reviewed. I haven't worn the roofers too much, but I've, I've, I've worn these tomahawks a lot, and they're super comfortable. Doesn't seem like there's much of a break-in on either one. I have some other boots. These are kind of, I'm going to do another international boot review, but I wanted to do at least four pairs of boots for each one of these videos um, that I'm doing more than one pair of boots. I may do a couple of videos and just highlight um, one pair of boots. I think I'm going to do that when um, the, uh, the Frank's rugged collab, rugged work, rugged outdoor apparel, sorry, rugged workwear, <laughs> rugged workwear 
is also having a collab with Frank's. And so that just got uh, dropped a couple days ago. And so nobody has those yet. But people are starting to receive the Frank's Rugged Outdoor Apparel uh, monkey, monkey boot or lace to toe roofer style boot. Uh, it's in an eight inch. I think you can get it in a six inch. I think that's all that you can change, but it's a uh, maroon type leather. And it's really beautiful. When I get that, I'm probably going to highlight that by itself. The Frank's X rugged outdoor apparel boot, because I was involved in the design on that. And, um, I just want to boost that a little bit and, and give that a, a little bit of a talking when I get that. Hopefully that comes soon. But I have some other boots here that are international boots. So, so this is your Thorogood International Boot Review. And um, the first one that I have are called Visveem. I don't know how you say it. Visveem, Visveem. They are Japanese made. Okay. These are called the Oki Folk. Let me see if I get that right. The Virgil Oki Folk Boot. Okay. These are super rare. They're very expensive. I bought them from a guy who got them in Japan. He was working there and they were super expensive, eight or nine hundred dollars. I, I didn't pay that. I paid just a fraction of that from the guy. You know, lots of these these beam boots and I've asked like Tony Wyatt, like our number one repair and resole cobbler in the United States that I know about, um, about this little piece of rubber here. I, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of like their trademark or their hallmark on a lot of their boots, it's right at the top of the um, uh, of the heel stack and the and the midsole, and I don't know what exactly what that's for. It's on a lot of their boots. I don't see it on all of them now, but nobody that I talked to could say that there's a purpose other than that's just something that they're putting. Maybe it's a bumper. These are very very comfortable. It's it's a it's a cap toe, a Vibram 100 lug sole, and um, they're one of the Japanese companies that make, uh, another Japanese company that I like is Capital with a K. I like their, some of their jeans and some of their jeans jacket. I got a jacket, a trucker style jacket from them that is just absolutely the nicest jacket that I have. It's a brownish color and like hand dyed with persimmon or pomegranate or something. And, uh, but a lot of these companies, you know, they make real crazy looking stuff. Um, for American styles, you know, it's, it's a pure Japanese style, but of course the Japanese, we have to thank for boosting all the interest and the Germans as well. <laughs> and a lot of the other Northern Europeans for boosting the interest in the heritage boots over the last 20 or so years. And so the Japanese have a lot of different styles, a lot of heritage styles. And so if you look in these beam, there's a lot of crazy stuff that you may not like. That's really um, uh, cutting edge of what fashion is over in Tokyo. And that's okay because they put out some stuff I like. And these Virgil, that was my grandfather's first name, Virgil Oki Folk boots are just amazing to me. If you can ever get your hands on a pair of that for a reasonable, those for a reasonable price, I would definitely do it. Now, the next pair of boots that I have are the only pair that I have with a leather sole. I don't like the leather sole. My Nanucellas were supposed to have a leather sole. My uh, Creosos were supposed to have a leather sole and I asked for them not to. I know uh, Dale from Aero Surfer LV loves a leather sole, but he's more of a dress boot guy. But this is how these came. And these are William Lennon and Company from England. These are a beautiful boot. Look at that, look at that. I don't know if you can see that. The sprung toe on that. Can you see that? It's just super cool. And so, um, William and William Lennon and Company it was a gentleman named William and Lennon. William Lennon and Company is his company. Uh, William Lennon uh, started his boot company in 1899, and it is run by the fourth generation, same family. So this is a great heritage line. If you can help them by endorsing their boots. I, I think you're really doing well by uh, furthering the craft of handmade boots. They have a workwear brand called Rufflander. I think it's one of the main workwear brands in England. And Rufflander, it's so cool. You can get an interior 
or an exterior steel toe. So it's like you can get like like a polished metal or chrome looking steel on the outside of the boot. And I think that's really cool because one of the things that happens with me with my Red Wings, um, not so much anymore now that I'm old, that I try to make the workers do more of the work, but being on our knees, we wear knee pads every day, all the time, never take them off. Uh, we wear like little girl volleyball, extra large athletic knee pads so we can slip them up and down, but they're always at least around our ankles. And when you're on your knees like that with your toes pointing down, you just grind on concrete and rough surface. You just grind the toe away and you keep having to take them back and to the Red Wing guy and have them dip up, put shoe glue on it. Some guys have some little metal guard pla or metal plastic protectors that kind of straddle the front of the toe like that, that they glue on there. But the Rough Landers solve that problem by having the metal, if you request that, on the outside of their boot. Now... This is called the Derby boot, and it's basically their dress boot, but it's a cross between like a, a dress or a vintage workwear boot. It has the, the cap toe with the fancy holes punched in it there, um, Brogue, or there's a lot of different names that a lot of different companies call that. Um, I picked out the leather. They were very helpful, um, communicative via email by giving me different leather samples. I didn't have, really have a maroon boot. I know it looks brown, it's kind of a maroon. And um, you can see all the little tacks in there. I don't know if you can, maybe you can. All the little tacks in there, uh, the little nails, little brass nails. And they have like replica boots, uh, like hobnail boots, stuff like that. Really cool stuff. William Lennon and Company, also Rufflander, is one of their companies. And in England, fourth generation, I don't know. These, it's just a really cool boot. You know, if you look at them, they're not perfect. They're a little bit rough. The finish isn't, it's really, really good, actually. It's, but you know, they just look a little funky. And it, it's like they're old, they're made the old way. So if there is one boot that I have that is, um, makes me feel like I actually am wearing a hundred year old pair of boots, this is them right here. And so William Lennon and company, there is, um, I didn't really feel much of a break in in these. Um, awesome boots. Awesome, awesome. That's what I got for you today, boot wise. Now... Another thing I wanted to talk to you about today is media, TV, phones, but really about depression. Um, I was thinking about this a lot, about the holidays, about how people feel. I've been talking to people, you know, that have Christmas celebrations. You know, some people tell you, oh, no presents. I, I don't really like that very much. Um, if someone wants to give, let them give. But I, I think that when you have Christmas celebrations, uh, some uh, you can. Some people have like a grab bag. We used to do that at work. We had a grab bag. Everyone would bring a gift, and then just reach in a bag and grab the gift, and everyone just brings one gift that way, and everybody gets a gift that way. But you know, if if you don't want to give, if you don't feel moved to give, don't give, and, and let people in your life know you don't have to give me anything. You know, you want to give me something, give me something. If I feel like getting you something, I'll get you something. But I like the no pressure effect. So, you know, some people don't have the means to buy everyone presents. And some people can't buy as fancy a present as someone else is going to get them with more means. So let's take the pressure off of the gift giving for the holiday season. Whatever your holidays are, whatever your holy days are, whatever your gift giving times are, birthdays, religious holidays, let each person give what they have decided in their heart to give, whether it be something, whether it be nothing, or whether it be many things. Let's just have it that way. I was thinking about television. And I really only intentionally watch television. I don't just turn on the TV and have it on all the time. I would encourage you not to have a TV in your kitchen, or if you do, not to have it on at mealtime. If you're eating alone, who cares? They say that it, the digestion is better when you don't have the TV on. I don't know if that's true. But 
if you're eating with somebody else, even one other person, your spouse, your mate, your kid, whoever it is, have the TV off, have some conversation, you know, sharing a meal. I think we talked about this before at Thanksgiving on the last video. Sharing a meal is the greatest form of fellowship that we do. So you know, get rid of the TV during mealtime. And as a matter of fact, maybe you shouldn't have TVs in your kids' rooms. I don't know. I know they like to play video games, but it's kind of making us isolated from each other. I got the phone too. I look at it all the time. Oh, side note. <laughs> Some guys are telling me, man, you got to up your equipment. This is the iPhone 6S Plus that I'm recording on. And maybe for Christmas, the carpenter will get a new phone. I'm looking at the X or the 10, whatever you want to call it. I want to get a better phone. So maybe the quality will get better. I am so technology challenged as a carpenter. I know how to use every tool almost, but technology really escapes me. So I apologize. At least we are together. Um, but when you look at media, when you look at TV, man, I mean, it's like I got rid of my cable now. We had cable. We weren't really using it. So we're just watching Netflix and Disney Plus and Apple TV and all these different things. And... Boy, oh boy, everything you could possibly think of, good or bad, you could just watch. It, it, they're making all these series about everything. Some of them are really fair, terrible and foul and against our value system, but I know we all have different values, so what can I say about that? But I want to tell you that there is nothing left to a child's imagination anymore. There's nothing left to your imagination anymore. Remember when you used to read a book? I don't know if you're an older person, maybe. When you used to read a book, you used to have an imagine, through the, through the description of the author, what the characters looked like and the landscape looked like. You know, when we build things, when we even design things that other people want as a carpenter, we have to use our imagination to figure out how to do it and what it's going to look like. So when we constantly have all this stuff, everything under the sun, right in front of our face all the time, it like mutes our imagination. We don't have to think of anything. Let's just copy what someone else did. So I would encourage you just to tone it down on the TV a little bit, especially with young children. Maybe when we're older, we're all already jaded. We're already who we're going to be. But kids, man, let them expand their mind. Let them use the power of their mind. <laughs> Sorry, lecture from the carpenter. You know, today we're here in California, and it is a little cold and rainy here. We actually have, gee whiz, only about 10 hours of daylight in the summertime. I think we have, what, 14, 14 hours of daylight. So um, it's easy to be depressed. It's cold. I am wearing uh, black Brave Star jeans, Vietnam CB boots right now from the Vietnam era, steel toe CB boots. You'll see those in the the combat boot video coming, and a Pendleton uh, trail shirt right now. Know that you are valued. You are wonderful. You are beautiful. You are intelligent. God made only one of you. And each and every one of us here on the planet desperately need you to be you. To be who you are. To, 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 to have the quality and the imagination of what's inside your mind used to better this world for all of us. So please, you know, you guys that work in offices, you're like my heroes. I can't look at a computer more than an hour without wanting to kill somebody. I, I, I don't know. It just makes me go nuts. I'm glad I have an outdoors job. I, I picked the right profession. And uh, you guys, though, you need to do something with your hands after work. I believe to be happy, you have to use your mind and your body every day make both of them tired and not overly exhausted and sore but tired and then you guys that have a pure labor job like me even guys that you know don't have to use your mind as much in a factory job or a labor job man read something when you get home read a book read the news it's trying to stay off of the political stuff if you're an american person i don't know it's a bunch of garbage most of the time but read about the earth read about culture read about faraway places Try to understand how the earth is changing and how people relate to each other. And you know what? Any of you, if you can read an author named Khalil Gilbran, 
Um, I've read all of his English published works. Read a book called The Prophet and just contemplate and think about what you do every day, how it affects other people. The Carpenter loves you. Sorry to go on and on. Have a happy day. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Holidays. Just have happiness and love.